guys, the focus of today's video is foundations that don't look like foundation. And by that, I mean, I, I think we all have a vision in our head when we think of a cakey, thick foundation. Just, we have a vision of what that would look like on our skin, right? And I think all of these foundations that I'm going to recommend in this video have a tendency toward looking really natural. Um, they all have the capability of being worn in a very lightweight manner, but can be built up for a little more coverage if you like it that way. I've got a variety of formats to talk about, um, a variety of price ranges as well, but I just feel like it's that time of year where if you are thinking about kind of switching up your makeup routine, going with something that just feels less like makeup on your skin and looks less like makeup, these would be some good ones to think about. And just a couple of factors real quick that I think can help your foundation not look like foundation would be to keep it light. Figure out, you know, through a little trial and error for yourself, what is the bare minimum of this product that I can get by with on my face and still get coverage that I want, but keep it really, really light. And I think that helps the staying power so much as well. It might be a little counterintuitive. You think, oh gosh, I'm going to, I got a big day today. I'm going to apply extra foundation. That way it lasts longer. But really, I think it's more likely to wear in a patchy type way if you apply a really thick amount. Trust me, I have experienced that time and time again on myself. And going for a really thin, even out application is really the way to go there. Also, um, keep powder minimal. You could totally, you know, screw the whole idea of a natural looking foundation that doesn't look like foundation by loading on a ton of powder on top. So I just go for powder where I think I really need it. So a little lightweight powder in the T-zone. And keep in mind, you may be putting a bunch of other powder products on your face anyway, like a powder blush, maybe a powder bronzer or a powder contour or a powder highlight. So try to keep Keep just face powders that can sometimes look a little bit cakey on top of foundation. Keep those really light. Also, for pretty much anything I'm recommending here today, if you want maximum coverage, go with a dense type foundation brush. I love my Sigma F80. I'm also holding the F84 here. I think those do a nice job of kind of getting the most bang for your buck just coverage-wise out of these. But if you want to keep it light or at least make it more of a slow build with these foundations in terms of coverage, a dampened blender spray sponge, whether it's this Real Techniques sponge, a classic beauty blender, or some other knockoff that you really like, um, a dampened sponge, I think, can kind of shear out the foundation. I think you can still build to a nice coverage level, but you might feel like you have a little more control in that process with a sponge. As I go through these foundations, I'm going to go probably from lightest to most coverage, so just keep that in mind. First one I want to recommend for a foundation that doesn't look like foundation is this Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid makeup. This is probably, of everything I've mentioned, this is the one that goes furthest back in terms of my use. And I've always liked this foundation, but I find it really tends to work its way in during, you know, the hotter months. And it's just a thin, lightweight foundation. Looks really natural on the skin. I wear it in the shade Natural Beige. I'm actually wearing it today with just a little concealer in certain places where I need it and a light amount of powder where I think I need it. This does contain broad spectrum SPF F20, but thin, lightweight coverage. Once you've got it on, you've got it all blended in. It really doesn't look like a bunch of foundation sitting on your skin. So I think this is a great option. I know a lot of people with um, sensitive skin have had good luck with this foundation. Now, if you're wanting a little more luminosity, and I think these two that I'm going to talk about have the potential to be like the thinnest, lightest weight that I'm going to talk about, but they can also build to a pretty impressive coverage level too. And I've mentioned these in my cushion video, but it's my L'Oreal Lumi cushion, and I also find it to be very, very similar to the Lancome Miracle cushion. So both of these on my skin, I think, have a very similar effect. They're going to be a little more glowy than the Neutrogena, but I think it's a natural glow. These, I think, are very wearable. They're really easy. You know, you can pop a brush, like one of these uh, more dense brushes, into it for your application and get that coverage just instantly, or I think you can build it up a bit more slowly with a beauty blender that works really nicely too and definitely check out my cushion video for a lot of details but basically this is how these work there is a cushion inside that is completely it's kind of like a sponge that's been totally saturated with foundation some people love this concept some people say just give me the bottle of foundation maybe they see it as a better value or um, a little bit more sanitary approach to do it that way if you're working with clean brushes and sponges and you're just using this for yourself it's probably not too big of a deal. 
well. But I've just found it really interesting how these can be the thinnest of the thin foundations. You know, you can apply them in just an incredibly light way. But at the same time, if you choose to build up more, uh, it still looks natural. So this is the Lancome here as well. I mean, if it comes right down to it, I would just go for this one because it's less expensive. But if you're a fan of Lancome products and, uh, you know, you're just thinking about, curious about whether or not this is good, I think it's awesome. But they both perform very, very similarly for me. But like I said, a little more glow to them than the uh, Neutrogena, but not in a speckles of glitter type of way. It's very natural. Next up, I've got a couple of liquid foundations that I think give me a very similar effect on the skin. They're kind of similar formulas. One's a little more thin than the other. So first I want to mention the Shea Moisture Weightless Shea Serum Foundation. I love this stuff. I think this is uh, really amazing coverage for a foundation that is so thin and lightweight. And I've got this in the shade Nude. And it does have a nice little pump style dispenser here. Again, fuller coverage with a brush, lighter coverage with a damp sponge. And talking about skin types with these foundations, I don't think any skin type should really be alienated from trying any of these because if you are going with the mentality of keeping it light, keeping it as thin as possible, I could see an oily skin person wearing this and maybe just making a bit more of a point to, to set the T-zone and a drier skin person could wear these and maybe just leave them as is, no setting powder and really enjoy the look of them too. But I do feel like the Shea Moisture offers that little extra moisture to the skin. It's not tacky and sticky on there, but it's just a really fascinating effect. Like I said, thin, 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 lightweight, but yet coverage and a little added moisture. It's really cool. And then another foundation that I feel like I get a really similar look from, although it might not be quite as thin, is this Fiona Styles Luminous Finish Foundation Concentrate. And this I have in the shade 04. Packaging on this stuff, this line is so cool, I gotta say. But it's interesting because this particular cap, like it only fits on a certain way due to this little notch right here. So I've spent some time messing with that, but uh, really pretty bottle. Got the pump dispenser as well. Reason why I love pumps so much is when you do figure out, okay, this is my ideal thin, lightweight amount of foundation for my natural look. You know, you can keep repeating it and be consistent with it every time. And this, um, while it says luminous finish, again, it's not uh, an outrageously luminous finish. It's not something that you put on your skin and you don't look like skin. It just looks like healthy skin. Really similar coverage to my Shea Moisture. Um, it's still thin and lightweight while just being a teeny bit thicker than this. But with both of these, I feel like I can get nearly full coverage. And we're talking about really natural, doesn't look like foundation foundations. That's saying a lot for something to be able to achieve that. So I've been enjoying this so much and, you know, play around with the different methods of applying it. I feel like I like the Dampen Beauty Blender with this most, just for the most natural finish. And and then a couple other things I want to throw out there. Um, the e.l.f. Moisturizing Foundation Sticks. These, I think, may be the most, like, overlooked, underrated. If you're an e.l.f. snob and you're hearing me pull out e.l.f. right now and you're rolling your eyes and you're thinking, oh, I'm never going to use e.l.f. stuff, this would be the e.l.f. item that might surprise you the most for what great quality it does have. These stick foundations can pack a lot of coverage. That's why I'm mentioning these last in the scope of what I'm talking about, but they can also be really sheared out and just look so nice and natural. I remember trying these when they initially launched. This would have been at least several years ago, and I I remember them having kind of an odd scent and it really did sort of turn me off from wanting to use them all the time. So I more recently repurchased them. There is no scent. I'm holding two because there is one that I use that's kind of a little bit my skin tone or maybe just verging on a little lighter and that's the shade called Nude. And I've also got a shade I can contour with and this is in the color Almond. And this is actually kind of like cream bronzer I feel because it's a little warmer maybe than a lot of contour shades I might use. But but I love blending these in with a beauty blender. I think that's the great way to thin it out and get a really natural look. If you want these to be your primary source of coverage, what I would first do for myself is take like a peachy corrector and get that under eye area taken care of and then just apply these over the larger parts of my skin where I want them to be. So like I really want coverage here, boom, boom, boom. Maybe I'll take it down the nose and on the forehead and then dab over it for coverage. I really like to apply the lighter part first 
first, get it fully blended in, and then if I wanna do the darker tone, I can blend that in afterward. A Little bit of depth in the cheekbone, if I'm feeling like it that day, you don't have to use this. It's kinda of like the accessory, like, little extra. And I just love the effect that these give. I don't feel like these have any, like, artificial luminosity in them, but it's just all about the texture, the way they blend out. I feel like they look very, very natural and skin-like. So hopefully this video gives you some ideas if you're thinking about kind of reworking your foundation routine for the warmer months, you know, what works well, what really doesn't look like foundation, but just looks like you have really great skin. These, I think, are some awesome options. Again, lightest weight being somewhere between these two. This is a little bit buildable, but I think it stays pretty lightweight any way you go. As far as the Healthy Skin Foundation, these can be just incredibly light because it's such a thin liquid that's in these um, compacts, but they can be built up quite a bit. You're getting a little more coverage out of these liquids, and then, you know, the sticks are kind of the wild card that could be combined with any foundation, worn alone. They can be very full coverage. They can also be very thinned out coverage. So thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!